E gridate, 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 sai a me che me ne importa. E parlate, parlate, io fingerò di ascoltarvi per l'ennesima volta. And one, one thing we would like to ask you, which is a little detached from this, when speaking about mm, you know the heterodox you know group there are some economically speaking there are some guys who i mean uh, are very keen on the balance of payments constraints and you know this kind of things well uh, <laughs> you know <laughs> coming from the neoclassical background yeah absolutely exactly so what what do you think about this i mean You've written something about, of course, but what is, you know, the conditions of sustainability of the trade deficit in a country, and is it, you know, advisable or not? As long, from the U.S. perspective, as long as people are willing to accept dollars, then yes. so what? Yeah. Right? Now, look at it from Germany's perspective. Okay. Koletsky equation. You guys are familiar. Yeah. Okay, there's only a couple sources of profits, right? Uh, capitalist investment, capitalist consumption, government deficits, and net exports. So that has to be positive, right? The trade balance has to be positive if they, it's going to contribute to profit. Okay, now go to Germany. Okay, you got a problem. Government deficits, well, you're constrained by the euro, right? Capitalist investment, capitalist consumption, hmm. they've been relying on net exports, right? And that's one of the problems for you guys, for the French, for the Belgians, right? Because right, Germany wants to flood the eurozone with German goods, right? Which, of course, means that you got problems in selling Italian goods or French goods as exportables. Okay. Uh, the United States, and you know, and Germany cannot say, okay, uh, we, we don't mind running deficits as long as people are willing to accept the mark because there is no mark, right? So then you have the euro constraint again in, in being imposed. The United States doesn't have that constraint. Right? So, people are holding dollars, all right? Uh, what, if they, what if they decide they're just going to cash them in? They're going to get paid in dollars. So, if they want to pay the Treasury the dollars, the Treasury will say, well, yes, here, okay, here are some dollars. And if you don't like paper money, we'll give you coins, right? So here, here's a hundred million dollars in pennies. We can crank them out if necessary. Of course, it costs more to produce a penny than a penny is worth, but that's another story, right? We'll pay in silver dollars or uh, nickel dollars, yeah, right? Uh, zinc, uh, whatever the cheapest metal is, iron ore. Um, so uh, no, uh, it. But again, it depends on which. Uh, uh, nation-state capitalism you're looking at, because we still have these nation-states, right? So, you know, because as we all know, at the world level, the balance of payments has to be zero, right? Uh, and, well, but, okay, go back to Germany. It wants to expand its export uh, market. Okay, other countries want to expand their you might get involved in trade wars, right? And that's very problematic because trade wars can lead to political wars. In the 1930s, you had trade wars. And I'm not saying, saying that's the, the basis of World War II, but it is a conflict, right? And, and so you got these nation states, each trying to advantage itself through its export markets, in the interest, of course, of those capitalists who are in the export markets. Uh, and uh, that can create a problem. Right? The cr 
Krupps in the 30s wanted to expand their steel uh, exports. Right? Well, how do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> Ma <laughs>